This next section is very important, if not the most important aspect of Alpine flying. This is the pilot's ability to recognise the difference between a safe luff side or windward side and the full and potentially dangerous partial lee side. So to explain this, I've chosen to show it on one of the most classic partial lee mountains in the Zillertal, the Hamburg. It's about 15 kilometres to the north of Meyerhofen and anybody who has been on our XC courses in the past will have heard me talk about this mountain with a lot of respect. But the theory can be applied to any mountain with similar characteristics. Okay, to understand here, first I'll explain what's happening upwind of this mountain. Presuming that the day is drawing in a good amount of air towards the heat low to the south, we can assume that lower down onto the north, there will be a constant soarable wind coming up the northwest face of the Hamburg. This is a good place to wait for a thermal to climb high enough to cross this obstacle. The sun doesn't have to be shining directly on the mountain to produce lift as thermals will be carried across the valley floor and forced up this huge bowl. Thermals may be less regular here as the sun is not shining direct but the valley wind will allow easy soaring until a good column with our name on it arrives. So what is actually happening to the south of this northwest face that makes some of Europe's most capable pilots think again about just blundering onto its sunny faces? The main reasons why this mountain is so feared by local pilots is its aspect to the sun. In the afternoon when the valley wind is at its strongest, its main area faces southwesterly, creating um, powerful heating of this area and very strong thermals. It has a long sharp edge which runs from the valley floor to its peak at 2000 metres. Just to the north of this mountain, the valley is pretty wide, but at a critical point the Gufnerberg on the other side of the valley runs down to meet it so there is an accelerated area of valley flow just where you don't want it. The reason for this acceleration is depicted as the red shaded areas on this image so together with this sharp edge and stronger wind it creates massive lee rotor. Put this with the pure heating of this rotor area and the thermals here are as nasty as you can expect anywhere in the Alps. This is the respected partial Lee effect. So what is partial Lee? As I've explained in the past, when there is a sharp directional change in the terrain, the air tumbles, producing rotor. However, when there is also a strong heating effect and therefore strong thermic activity, this is a bad combination. As a thermal forms on the side of the mountain, it gains volume and when it becomes too big and buoyant, it heads off up the slope until meeting something along the way that will force it to leave the terrain. For example, a snow line, the peak itself, uh, the start or end of a forested area. As this thermal forms in an area of rotor, the whole source is disturbed and would look something like a twisting mass of air. This thermal has no chance to ever be anything other than nasty. When it finally leaves the terrain, it is akin to a uh, French plaque with very hard edges and lots of sink as the air above is pulled down towards the rotor. It will also be given a final kick and twist as it nears the top of the terrain, as the air will be forced over the top as well, most likely. It's, uh, you can expect a rough ride if you accidentally find yourself in an area like this. Partial leaves can develop anywhere at a sunny slope meets the ground with a valley wind coming over or more importantly around it. There are many such mountains around the Northern Alps as the valley wind generally comes from the north. The next option is by far the best one and one that I would choose most of the time. It's called the Full Lee. Although this sounds worse, it is in fact a much safer bet as although it will be strong, it will at least be laminar air rising from the hotspot. This is mainly because the source is protected from the valley wind and will possibly only get a little twisted as it approaches ridge height. Depending on the strength of the meteo or valley winds being pushed over the ridge, this will determine the amount of twisting and how far this extends above and below the crest. All in all, the thermal will generally become laminar again soon after and reward the thinking pilot with a quick trip to base so we can continue on our way. Okay, so just to recap, whenever there is a large change in direction in terrain, there is potential for lee side activity. 
So what a pilot has to observe is where the wind will be forced up and where it will be forced over and create rotor. And also, is the sun shining on that rotor? Also another potential for lee size is where two valley systems meet. On the upside is that whenever there's a change in direction and possible lee, there is a chance for an easy soar up on the wind. This is why it's crucial to understand which way the valley flow is running. It'll help pilots stay airborne and most importantly safe if you find yourself low in these areas. The most important rule of all is that wind beats sun, always. The next part will be about what this means for us in the real world.